Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Animal Alley. Let's begin. So, our activities for today. We are going to complete a wild word problem. Then we're going to learn what our new mystery animal is. And then to end today, I have some more activities that are optional that you can do with your family if you'd like. Okay, so let's get right in. It says, Margot the bunny found four carrots. She already had eight carrots. How many carrots does Margot have all together? Okay, so first we need to determine, are we adding or subtracting? It's helpful to see the language that they use in the problem to give us a hint if we're adding or we're taking away. So the words all together kind of give us a big clue. That means that we're taking two groups and we're pushing them to all together. We want to know the total of both groups added together. So we know that she has eight carrots. So I'm going to get my little highlighter here. I'm going to make the color orange. And I'm just going to do circle counters. They don't have to be perfect. So I'm going to count to eight. Here we go. We have one, two, three, four, five. Seven and eight. So there are Margot's eight pre existing carrots. Then it said she found four more carrots. So adding on to my pre existing 10 frame, I'm going to add four more. Let's count one, two, three, four. Now we can solve this a few ways. We can subitize with our eyes. We know. That if we fill an entire 10 frame, that represents how many? It represents 10. So if we know this is 10, we're going to use the strategy called counting on. So we can say 10, 11, 12. So that's one way of doing it. Or you could just count all of the counters just to double check. But I encourage you to try to challenge yourself to subitize. Count with your eyes before your fingers, okay? But just to review, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we know that Margot has 12 carrots all together, taking special note of the language that they used in that problem. Great job, my friends. So we are going to continue with our lesson. So using our word problem as inspiration, what animal do you think we are focusing on today? If you guessed rabbits, you were correct. They were going to be focusing on the species called the Eastern Cottontail. Now these are our rabbits that we see in our backyards in PA, and they are a type of mammal. So we'll talk a little bit more about what a mammal is on the next slide. But for now, we're just going to remember they are mammals. They are herbivores, which means they do not eat any meat. They eat plants. And they live up to three years in the wild. They are about 15 and a half inches. So that's a little over a foot. A little over a foot. Close to a foot and a half. Um, and they weigh 28 to 54 ounces. They are about the size of a teacup. So if you have a teacup in your household, Pull that friend out and see to compare for size. They're not very big. They're pretty small. Some more fun facts about them. Eastern cottontail is named after its cotton ball-like tail. These rabbits like to live in open spaces like meadows and farms. They graze at night and like to eat grasses and herbs. They also like to eat vegetables found in gardens like lettuce and peas, which is why sometimes People don't really like having rabbits in their yard because if they take all this time to tend to their garden and these rabbits come in and eat their food, it kind of makes them upset. But in the wintertime, when those foods are less plentiful, they will eat bark, twigs, and buds. So during the day, cottontails hide in vegetation, so just bushes, um, and if spotted by predators, they will run in a zigzag pattern to help disorientate. That means to confuse them or make them dizzy. Um, their their uh, predators that are chasing them 
And when they're running, they can run up to 18 miles per hour, which is crazy fast. Okay, so earlier I said that these friends are mammals. So to be a mammal, moms have to give birth to live babies. So there are no eggs like, like some reptiles and birds. They give birth to, you know, they, they hatch. The babies hatch out of eggs. But these are born alive. Um, the babies drink milk. They are vertebrates. That's that big word that we talked about um, last time. Vertebrate means that they have a backbone. So mammals have backbones. Um, they grow fur at some point in their lives. A lot of mammals are actually born without fur, and rabbits are actually an animal that's born without fur. But when they when they mature and grow up, they grow fur, and they're warm blooded. So I kept this picture from our frog episode, episode number one, we learned that warm blooded animals, their body temperature stays the same. So mammals temperature stays the same, no matter if it's hot or cold outside. So that's what our rabbit friends are. Okay. So rabbit communities reside underground in extensive, complex engineered burrows. So rabbits do not hibernate. Now that's something that I actually didn't know. I thought that they did, but they do not hibernate. They seek shelter in the winter in existing burrows and they just use that as protection. They stay warm under there, but they do not hibernate, which is a fun fact. So what if I find a baby rabbit? Now I know I've heard this question. I've wondered myself, if you find a baby rabbit that doesn't have a mom, maybe it fell out of a nest or you were cutting, your friend was, your parent was cutting the grass and you found one, or you just found one in your backyard. See if it be, I think that nature needs to stay in nature. I read online that some people think that because humans touch it, it loses its scent so its mom can't find it. That's actually a myth, but it's important that they are in the wild and Stay with their mom if possible um, because they have that milk that they need to stay healthy. It has something called antibodies and all the vitamins and nutrients that little friend needs. So its best bet is to stay outside. So do not pick up a baby rabbit, though it's tempting. A wild rabbit is best to stay in the wild. Okay, my friends, so that is the end of our episode for today. I found you another Wild Kratz video. It's called In Search of the Easter Bunny, and they actually highlight the Eastern Cottontail in this episode, so that link is in the description below. And parents, I have another free activity on Teachers Pay Teachers. These are just 10 frame cards that you can print. You don't have to print them in color. You can print them in black and white. And they practice that concept of subitizing, so um, counting the numbers with your mind before your fingers. Um, and then you match those up with the numeral. So I hope you enjoy those activities. If you choose to do them, that's awesome. Um, and I hope you have a fun and safe day. Happy learning. As usual, if you need anything, feel free to um, reach out to me or your teacher, and we'd be happy to help. Have a great day.